Well, good morning. Welcome, St. Mary's. Welcome here for this opportunity to be able to worship the Lord on this fourth Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, we're really glad to have you here. Uh, please be sure to, uh, to check and see if you are going to be using our worship guide. Uh, just click on the button. It should be there for you, all of the things that you need for the service. Or uh, in your Book of Common Prayer, it is the Holy Eucharist, right? One on page 323. Let us worship the Lord. And be sure to go ahead and send in your prayer requests. Uh, there's a lag between what happens there and what happens here. And so send in your prayer requests or any questions or concerns that you've got. And Kim, hey Kim, uh, Kim will be, uh, will be more than happy to help, uh, help you navigate them. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are opened, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we, might, that we may perfectly, please, uh, perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And, and on peace, earth, peace, goodwill good towards, towards men. We praise, we praise thee, thee. We bless thee. We, we worship thee. thee. We glorify we thee. thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, God, heavenly King, God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, O Lord, Lord, the only begotten, begotten Son, Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord, Lord God, God, Lamb, Lamb of God, God, Son of the Father, Father, that takest away the sins of the world, Lord, have mercy upon us. Thou that, that takest take away the sins of the world, of the world receive our prayer. Thou that, that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou, for thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O Almighty God, who hast built thy church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, himself, Jesus Christ, being the chief cornerstone, grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their doctrine, that we may be made into an holy temple acceptable unto thee through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> our first reading this morning is from Genesis. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, father, yes, my son, Abraham replied, the fire and wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son, and the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up there in a thicket. He saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. 
So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. The word of the Lord. Please join me in saying Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I have perplexity in my mind and grief in my heart day after day? How long shall my enemy triumph over me? Look upon me and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, lest I sleep in death. Lest my enemy say, I have prevailed over him, and my foes rejoice that I have fallen. But I put my trust in your mercy, and my heart is joyful because of your saving help. I will sing to the Lord, for he has dealt with me richly. I will praise the name of the Lord Most High. Our second reading this morning is from Paul's letter to the Romans. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin shall no longer be your master, because you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are the slaves of the one you obey, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. I am using an example from everyday life because of your human limitations. Just as you used to offer to yourselves as slaves to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness, so now offer yourselves as slaves to righteousness leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things that you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory be to thee, O Lord. This is Matthew chapter 10, beginning at the 40th verse. Jesus said, Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of God, of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated or make yourself comfortable. It is, uh, it's a it's a great thing to be able to be together and to be able to uh, to puzzle over scripture and to uh, to receive uh, you know this 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 direction this um, this uh, this uh, instruction and blessing from God. Um, but 
I, you know, I gotta ask this question. So do you trust God? I mean, do you trust God? I mean, with all of the stuff going on in the world today, where has he been? <laughs> what has he been up to? What kinds of things has he been, has he been preoccupying himself with? With all of the coronavirus uh, that's out there, with all of the racial tension that's going on, um, you, know, you know, where has he been? This question about uh, whether we can trust God or not. It's really at the heart of, of much of our struggle, isn't it? And it's at the heart of uh, the Old Testament lesson uh, for today. And this, and this, uh, this, this uh, interchange uh, with, with Abraham. Uh, it starts out, the lesson does. It says, and sometime later, God tested Abraham. God tested Abraham. Well, I don't take testing to be a terribly friendly kind of thing to do. I mean, I don't like being tested. Um, I like just being accepted. Um, and, yet, uh, and yet, it sets the tone for this entire passage. And, uh, and, and we, the temptation is for us to, to read it like God is trying to have Abraham jump through hoops. But the idea of being tested is important in our life, and it's important in our, in our spiritual journeys. Um, you know, I... You know, I got in my car and I drove here today, but before I ever even got this car, um, before I purchased it, um, it had been tested. It had been tested in a thousand different ways in order to be able to know that it was going to function in a way that was going to represent what they were telling me it was going to do. Uh, in fact, you know, you can't go into your house and buy all, and look at almost anything that you've bought without knowing that it's got the house, the good housekeeping seal of approval that has been tested. You know, that if you buy a lamp, it's not going to burn up on you or, or a toaster or an air conditioner that's going to work. Uh, it, testing, is, testing is important. We're waiting for a virus, for a, for a vaccine for this virus. And and there are over a hundred different vaccines in the running, and they're all being tested, and we want them to be tested. <laughs> I don't want anybody putting anything in my body until it's been tested. We're tested all through our lives, we are. It's part of what makes education possible, is because students are tested in order to be able to know what they know and what they don't know. And so this process of being tested is, is critical to what it means to be human, what it means to be safe, what it means to grow. And so God chooses to test Abraham, not because he wants to play games and make him jump through hoops or walk through a maze, but, uh, but because he cares for him. This testing is, uh, is for Abraham and, and for the demonstration of God's love for him. And yet, you got to scratch your head. This is one of the toughest Old Testament passages um, that has got to be out there. He says, um, so what's he testing him with? He says, Abraham, here I am. I like that here I am. You know, it's J Abraham, notice, as we go through the reading several times, he says, a here I am. Abraham, reporting for duty, sir. Always reporting for duty. Uh, he doesn't hide. He doesn't slink away. He's not in the shadows. He reports for duty. Then God said, Take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Wow. Wow. Now just a little context um, for this passage. So... Abraham um, existed, uh, existed before Jesus, before King David, uh, before Moses. He is in the very early pages of the Bible in Genesis. 
And, uh, and when he and his wife, Sarah, were 75 years old, uh, God came to them and said uh, they'd not been able to have any children. And he was, he, the two of them were chosen by God to have a son, and that son was going to be the son of promise. And uh, he said, look up, Abraham, look up into the sky and see all the stars in the sky. You will have, you will be the father of many nations and, and the descendants, your descendants will be greater than all of the stars in the sky. And, uh, and Abraham and Sarah laughed. <laughs> they laughed because they were 75 years old and going to have a child. Uh, but the promise of God was made. And yet time went on. Time went on. 25 years time went on. At one point, they decided to take measures into their own hand, and so there was a handmaid, Hagar, and the, the resulting birth of Ishmael, but God said, no, I mean, uh, I'll, uh, I'll bless Ishmael, but that's not the fulfillment of my promise. And at uh, 100 years old, Sarah becomes pregnant and gives birth to a son, the son Isaac. And so finally, Finally, they've been waiting. They've been waiting for all this time for this child, and they've got him. So many hopes and dreams are embedded in this boy. And so he, he grows up, and he's, he's you know, what, eight, nine, ten years old, enough to be helpful you know, around the house and helpful with his father. And now this testing comes. This child who is the, the, the embodiment of hopes and dreams for the future, precious beyond imagining. And God says, Abraham, I want you to take that boy and I want you to go to the mountain and I want you to sacrifice him to me. trust in God. So this story is not just Abraham's story, but it's also our story. And we're invited to, to ask the question, so what do, we, what do we put our hope in? What do we believe that's, that this thing is precious to us? that this thing offers us a bright and hopeful future, that, that if we just simply cling to this, everything will be, will be really wonderful. It can, be, it can be our kids. It can be, uh, it can be our finances. Uh, it can be our businesses. Uh, it can be our status. It can, be, uh, it can be our education. It can be all different kinds of things that we as human beings have a way of, of producing and just looking at and seeing that that one embodies all of our hopes and dreams. And, and God comes to us as he comes to Abraham and says, you see this? You see that mountain over there? I want you to, 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 take, to take that. And I want you to go and sacrifice it to me. Boy, it doesn't seem, doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem fair. For three days, um, Abraham had packed everything up. He got the wood for the fire. He got the fire, he had a donkey, two helpers, and Isaac. And for three days, they journeyed. Now, um, what are the feelings that you can imagine for, for Abraham to go through? Resentment, anger, bitterness, disappointment, fear. And yet, um, and he went 
And those were uh, perhaps the longest days of Abraham's life. And finally, they, uh, they arrive at the, at, the, at the mountain, going through the darkness of the nights and wondering kind of what the conversation along the road must have been like. So they arrive at the mountain and, and, uh, and Abraham says to his servants, he says, to stay here with the donkey and uh, the boy and I, we're gonna go up there and we'll be back. We'll be back, the, the faith of Abraham. Hopeful thinking or trust. As they're walking along, um, Isaac says, uh, Dad, he says, we got the wood, we got the fire. Where's the lamb? Um, the Lord will provide the lamb for us, Isaac. Wishful thinking, bold faith. So uh, slowly, hoping something will happen. Um, Abraham and Isaac, they find the rocks and they build an altar and they, they take the wood and they put it on the altar. And then the moment comes. It's called, it's called the binding of Isaac. When Isaac, when Abraham finally turns to his son and he binds his hands probably behind his back and he places them on his altar. You can only just imagine the, the, uh, the look on Isaac's face. Uh, Darcy Weir has done a wonderful job uh, in the meditation on, on, on this passage of scripture, places him on this altar. You know, uh, a side note um, about child sacrifice. Um, child sacrifice was rampant uh, during the time of Abraham. And, and many primitive religions practiced it. In, in uh, South America, the Incas, the Aztecs, Machu Picchu is a, is a, is a big, is a big uh, hill, um, the purpose for which um, was child sacrifice. Uh, they, the archeologists have found uh, a pit of 300 children that had been sacrificed. And in the area where Abraham lived, the Canaanites in that area, the gods of uh, Baal and Molech and the Ashtara, they all demanded child sacrifice, sometimes in order to be able to placate God, in order to be able to placate their version, this perverted God of theirs, so that they could survive a drought or, or win a battle or uh, just because the seasons were changing. And so then regularly as a part of the annual custom is the sacrifice of children. So what's the difference? The invitation is for us to come and, and to place those things that are precious on the altar of God. Our children, our spouses, our businesses. St. Paul even writes in Romans, he says, present therefore your bodies as a living sacrifice unto God, for that is your reasonable service. So what is the difference between these pagan, ugly, hateful gods 
and the God of Abraham. There was an angel. There was an angel as, as, uh, as Abraham lifted the knife to kill his own son. The voice from an angel. Abraham, Abraham, stop! <laughs> Don't lay a hand on that boy. Now that I know that you fear me above all else, And so with those words, with those words, the knife comes down and, and, and cuts the ropes that held Isaac bound. Hugs, receiving back his son, and... Uh, and a ram that's caught in a thicket over on the side. And so together, Abraham and Isaac sacrifice the lamb, a sacrifice of thanksgiving and gratitude. Abraham uh, named that place Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide that the kind of God that we serve is not a God that is filled with hatred, that is filled with ugliness, that is filled with a longing for war and human blood. But the God that we serve is a God who advocates on our behalf, is a God who, who brings to us the opportunity for life, who tests us in order to make us strong to face the challenges of the day and who knows that unless we put these precious things on the altar and offer them up we will never be free we will always be imprisoned by our own ego and selfishness and so we have a God who provides for us Mount Moriah, this very spot where the sacrifice of Isaac was offered goes on to become uh, in the center of Jerusalem the, the, the place in which the temple is built. And it is in that place that, uh, that the ultimate provision for us is made as, as the Lamb of God in the life of Jesus carries his own wood to his own sacrifice for us that we would be healed. Now, I got to ask you the question again. So do you trust God? In the midst of all of the difficulties, in the midst of all of the darkness, in the midst of all of the challenges and in the midst of all of the testing that takes us down to our knees and challenges everything that we think. Do you trust him? Has he demonstrated himself to you to be trustworthy? That's the opportunity that is given to us. And, and, and every time, when we need reassurance, when we question whether or not we have the strength to make it, when we, when we question whether God cares or anybody else cares about what we suffer and anyone else understands, we have only to look to the altar and to the cross where God himself has become our sacrifice and a sign that he will always, always, always provide for us and care for us and surround us with his love.
Amen. So let us affirm together the faith of our hearts and of our lives by using the form of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. <clears throat> we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. ...of the people. We know with great certainty that a Father hears our prayers and is compassionate towards all of creation. Let us offer intercessions in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit by saying, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for your church, your people, and your mission in the world. We pray for St. Mary's and her leaders. We pray for our local churches and all who serve them. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for our president, governor, and all local leaders. We lift up the residents of Martin County, especially our health care providers, first responders, and educators. Help us to show gratitude for our local resources, land, and our residents. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the United Church of Pakistan. In our companion diocese of the Bahamas, we pray for St. Jude Parish, Smith Point. And in our own diocese, we pray for St. Andrew's Episcopal Church. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those being affected by the coronavirus. Bring healing and comfort to those who have fallen ill. May they be strengthened and brought back to full health. Bless the hands and the minds of caregivers that they would be protected. Inspire those searching for a vaccine or cure and give them success. Guide the leaders around the world that they may be filled with wisdom to lead their countries out of this medical and financial crisis. Lord, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for the anxious, the lonely, and those who are ill, especially Stephen, Joanne, Karen, Peggy, Alan, and Father Juan Carlos Quinones, for women and men and for children who are in abusive homes, and for those who may not know you. Let your love and peace heal their hearts and restore their minds. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who have died. May they be welcome into your heavenly home. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, who reached across the ethnic boundaries between Samaritan, Roman, and Jew, who offered fresh sight to the blind and freedom to captives, help us to break down the barriers in our community. Enable us to see the reality of racism and bigotry, and free us to challenge and uproot it from ourselves, our society, and our world. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you, Father, for the blessings we receive. May we continue to live into them with grateful hearts and joy. Give we thanks to you for all of your goodness. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God, most merciful God. 
We confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent for the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways. To the glory of thy name, amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Peace, my dear brother. Peace, brother. <laughs> Greet one another. Well, again, welcome. It is, uh, it's great, uh, again, for us to be able to come together. I want to say thank you, especially to Daryl Lester, uh, who's, who's assisting us this morning. Uh, and it's, uh, it's wonderful to know that we've got this community of great folks like Kim out there, uh, who's helping to make worship continue to happen, uh, even during uh, the days of the coronavirus. There are a number of announcements that are here in your news and events, and I would encourage you to look it over and be aware of the things that are coming out. I mentioned uh, Darcy Weir's... Uh, um, uh, s sessions on uh, on uh, their currently right now on Abraham and so this the one coming out is the first half on Abraham and there will be another one on the sacrifice of Isaac and there will be another one next week uh, she's doing a really very fine job and then just a reminder about uh, about the uh, the listening series that comes up uh, each Wednesday now for about six weeks uh, and the one coming up for this week I am very pleased to say is uh, I'll be able to uh, spend some time with the the chief of police who's fairly new here in Stuart, Chief uh, Joseph Tuminelli. Um, he's been chief of police here for about a year and a half and, and is really, I think, uh, doing some wonderful things to help open doors in the community, kind of bring a fresh, uh, a fresh wind uh, into, uh, into our community. So I look forward to being able to spend some time with him and I hope that you'll come and join us at noon uh, this coming Wednesday. Come and grab a cup of soup from over in the Mary's Kitchen and, uh, and a sandwich and come join us. Uh, and also know that Mary's Kitchen is now open Open again, a curbside service, an opportunity for people to come and, and just kind of walk in, take, pick up their food and take it with them. Increasing numbers of folks are starting to come now as, as the word of mouth is getting out. And so please be praying for those folks who are there on the, the Mary's Kitchen team, that they'll continue to be safe, as well as the guests who come each week. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice unto God. At this point, I'd like to pause and, uh, and encourage you to go ahead and continue to send in your prayer requests so that we can have them to pray for at the end of the service, and then to be able to recognize that we are able to do the things that we do in ministry here at St. Mary's because of you, because of your support. Uh, that support is uh, your taking the time to, uh, to fill out a checks and stick it in an envelope and put it in the mail to us or using uh, Faith Street or PayPal or one of the other digital uh, formats to be able to financially support us uh, during this very strange time in our life together. But also your prayers, uh, your words of encouragement, all of those things that allow us to be the community of faith uh, that Jesus has, has raised us up to be. So, uh, so we want to give thanks uh, now to God for the things that he's provided through you. 
Lord God, we, uh, we do give you thanks for these gifts that, uh, that you have provided. Like Abraham offered up Isaac, Lord God, we offer up these things uh, so that your kingdom can shine, so that your light will, will give hope to those who are in darkness. And so we pray, Lord God, that you would take them, that you would fill them with your blessing, and that, they, that, the, that you would use them so that people might be touched by you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The service continues on page 333 with Eucharistic Prayer 1, page 333, or uh, in your worship guide. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord. Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, creator of the light and source of life, who has made us in thine image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father. For that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance of his, his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine that we receiving them according to thy son, our savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution in remembrance of his death and passion may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be, who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. 
And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us, us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our Lord. trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And, and lead, lead us, us not Lord. into temptation, but deliver, deliver us, us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ has died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Come and join us at the table of the Lord. This is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. This is the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. This is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also, also heirs, heirs through hope, hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And, and we, we humbly, humbly beseech, beseech thee, O heavenly Father, so, so to, to assist, assist us with thy grace, that, that we, we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good, good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom, to whom with thee and, and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world, world without, without end. end. Amen. Amen. And now I'm just grabbing my phone in order to be able to see the prayers that you all have uh, sent in. Oh. For some reason, Kim says, um, the Facebook stream was not working. <laughs> and so, so we trust that there has been a stream of your prayers directly to God, not going through Facebook. What a concept. <laughs> So we give thanks, Lord God, for all of the prayers that you raise up from your people. We pray that you would take them and that you would bless them and set them on fire for the sake of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds and the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. My friends, go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.